Now, it's time to animate. Well, we can take the orbit camera tool and fly around our text, you know, do some different stuff, but I want to kind of show you a better way to use the After Effects camera because it can be a bit tricky when you start doing more complicated compositions. Complicated compositing and compositions while you're composing music for company. Anyway, um, what you want to do is create a null object. So I'm going to choose Layer New Null Object. Now, we talked about null objects previously, but I'm going to kind of go over it again. I'm going to choose null object, and it's kind of created there. It starts out as a 2D object, but we want to click on the 3D checkbox. Also, for any of the switches, you can just click on one and just drag down, and it turns them all on for other layers. Or if you have a few layers selected and you turn it on for one, it turns it on for all of those ones. So any of the switches will allow you to do that. It's kind of nice. But now that our null object is 3D, what I'm going to do is take the camera, take the parent whip, and parent our null object. Okay, what have I done? I've basically taken this camera, and instead of having to animate the anchor point, you know, like where the camera is looking and the camera, and trying to make this all work, I've now created a null object that I can animate all by itself, and I don't have to worry about any of the complexities of this camera for right now. So what I can do is simply animate the position of the null object. So if I hit P, I can kind of move these values around. And you see the null object doesn't really move. Well, it does, but the camera is linked to the null object. And since we're looking through the camera, whatever I do moves the camera. And so the null object always seems to stay right in front of it. It's like being on a wagon, and the wagon's pulling you around. You're always going to see, you know, the handle of the wagon. It's just pulling you around and, you know, pushing you down and taking your lunch money. So, these are sad times. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to move the current time indicator to the beginning of the comp. Uh-oh, our particles have disappeared. Well, they haven't disappeared. It's just they haven't been born yet. So if I take my particle layer, I can offset it and so that it's already been emitting particles for a few seconds and that way they'll be there the entire time. Now in After Effects CS3, the nice thing is you can just extend layers on infinitely. Um, otherwise you may just have to make your comp longer in order for the layers to be longer if you're working in an earlier version, but you'll figure it out. So here we are and our particles are up and we want to animate this null object. So, I'm going to set the stopwatch for the position. Remember, the position, letter P. Set the stopwatch. Move forward. Then I'm going to set a keyframe for the position. Then I'm going to click this back arrow, which takes me back to the other keyframe here. And I'm just going to, I don't know, X, Y, Z. I'm going to move us over a bit. So now kind of see we kind of fly through this. Now here's the thing, I want to have particles all over the place and I don't see any particles over here. So I want to make our particle field larger. So if I go back to my particle layer, bring down my particle world, I bring up my producer or my emitter and I have my radius X, Y, Z. I want to make it bigger, taller, and longer. Now you spread it out, what do you do? Well, you make it seem like there's less particles. So we also want to increase the birth rate. So more babies. Let me make this wider. Now I'm also going to increase the longevity of the particles so they kind of stay up a little bit longer. They seem to be kind of turning on and off a little too much. And if you turn that up, you also want to turn the birth rate down, kind of even it out. So now if we look at our animation, Looks pretty cool. Looks like we're really in 3D space. Now, the animation is going to be a little choppy, but let's check it out. I'm going to hit play forward, RAM preview. So, really choppy. So, I'm going to select this keyframe and hit F9. And if you remember, that's sort of the easy ease keyframe that's going to kind of smooth and slowly stop into that position. Then, animate it. Okay. Looking pretty good. Now, what if we want to do some more cool stuff like 
fly past this and, you know, I don't know, do something else. Well, no problem. What I'm going to do is take our logo, take the pan behind tool, because what I want to do is I want to take the rotation tool and rotate our layer, but I want to rotate around our star. So if I go to the pan behind tool, kind of move in here, I can move this pivot point right to the middle of this star. So now if I take the rotation tool, I can rotate around the z-axis and you can see it's kind of rotating in a circle around the star and that's what we want to do. So now we fly in, we'll pause for a moment, then we'll go to the logo, hit R, it brings up the rotation and when a layer is 3D it's called orientation. So we'll set the orientation, move forward a little bit, X, Y, Z. So I want to move the Z up maybe 90 degrees. And it's good to work in numbers like that, 90, you know, 270, 45, 180, and animate that forward. Also select both of the keyframes here and hit F9. So it's kind of a nice smooth animation. Then I'll set a keyframe for my null object's position. Remember the null object is pulling the camera around. Then I'll move forward a bit. And X, Y, Z of my null object, I'm going to move the Z space forward. Maybe about right there. So, we animate, we see our title, it spins down, and we fly past it. Kind of like some space gate for After Effects. And okay, now we fly past it to what though? An empty field. So, let's create another text layer out in the distance. Now, I can create another text layer or I can be lazy, go into my logo comp, alt, double click, copy this After Effects text, control C or edit, copy, go back to comp 2, edit, paste, and then turn on the 3D layer switch. Let's move it up so we can see it. There it is, looking good. We'll move it to the top of the stack so we can see it. And remember, 3D layers don't really matter too much, the order they're rendering, as long as they're all next to other 3D layers. But you'll, you'll figure that out along the way. Um, now, if I zoom in here, we have our X, Y, Z axis. I'm going to roll over the Z axis, and I'm going to push this back. Now, it's kind of going slow as I'm moving it. Now, if I hold down Shift, it moves at a value of times 10, so it goes a lot faster. Now, I've pushed it back there, and I'll move it up too just so we can see it, and it's way back there. Then if I move forward on my animation, you can see we kind of close in on it. Then I can reposition it so that it's squared up with the camera. So, turn on my title safe here, and we'll bring it close to the camera here. Well, not close, but a normal size, and then we'll move it here. Shut off our title safe. And now we can kind of watch the animation. So here it is, and then there's our After Effects text. But the problem is our text is back there, and we can see it doesn't, doesn't quite look right. So what we'll do is during this transition, if I select the null object and hit the letter U, we can look at our keyframes. And the keyframes are kind of the key, you like that? Keyframes are the key to creating good animation. So for the After Effects layer, I want the opacity to fade in as the camera moves forward. So I'm going to hit the letter T, bring up the opacity, set a keyframe at 0%. Then I'm going to move forward to right when the camera stops and turn the opacity up to 100. So now I'm hitting negative and plus on the uh, keyboard there to move in. Oh, I don't know if I talked about this, but if you haven't figured it out already, layers can be kind of clipped or trimmed by just clicking and dragging the in and out points. And you can kind of move them around, do all that stuff. So I don't know if I talked about that. But 